Hello everyone and welcome back. Let's start with our first segment, Fast Wheel. Fast Wheel, where we present the latest telecom and technology news from around the world. Airtel appears to have a two-pronged strategy in Africa, within countries, by deepening its presence. For example, Airtel Rwanda has entered into an agreement with Millicom International to acquire Tigo Rwanda and become the number two operator in the nation, but also across countries by increasing its mobile money customer base, data usage, and mobile penetration in general to improve their profits. Well, as it said, every champion is a contender who refuse to give up. Two Kenyan operators, Airtel and Safaricom, have started to try out a joint mobile money system to allow customers of each to exchange funds. This would make sending and receiving money seamless across networks and of course benefit users who would not be limited in their options. Meanwhile, the third operator in the market, Telecom Kenya, after having pulled out of the orange money system in 2017, appears to believe it can have success by launching its own independent platform. So what should we call this new kind of money exchange? Like cryptocurrency should be called telecom currency? What do you think? Mobile data traffic globally hit a six-year high during the third quarter of 2017. It jumped 115% year-on-year. But the story is, India and China accounted for half of that growth. In India, the company Reliance Geo, just six months after launching a nationwide 4G network, carried more data traffic than any other mobile operator globally. And in China, with unlimited data plans, these have driven up the accelerated traffic growth 166% year-on-year. What do we make of this? People. Lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of people. That's one sure for our way of taking over the internet. The company Blockchain.info has introduced a digital wallet in India, thus providing the owners of Bitcoin with even more transaction options. Speaking of Bitcoin in India, the Income Tax Department is pursuing Bitcoin owners for, you guessed it, tax evasion. Yes, the Income Tax Department has actually frozen the bank accounts of at least a dozen owners over suspicious transactions. They've also issued notices to thousands of brokers and individuals who were investing in Bitcoins. Of course, they could only freeze the bank accounts, not the Bitcoin accounts, which is the whole point Bitcoin owners have been saying. So now the Bitcoin owners can use their Bitcoins to spend it on anything. They can't really spend it, can they? Not yet. In the recent budget, Indian Finance Minister Arun Jaitley announced that the Indian government does not consider cryptocurrency, like Bitcoin, a legal tender, and the government will take all possible measures to curb its use for illegal activities. However, the government will encourage the use of blockchain technology for the banking and insurance sector. T-Systems Brazil, the Deutsche Telekom subsidiary, has partnered with Claro in order to deliver IoT services as an MVNO. Clearly, IoT is the new pata of technology. Meanwhile, the market is rife with rumors that Amazon is preparing to launch a YouTube-style streaming service. Now, it wouldn't be a complete surprise if Amazon has decided to challenge Google in the entertainment space. After all, the two tech giants have been longtime rivals. So let's wait and watch if Amazon can out-tube Google. Stay tuned for Mean Girls Part 3. Google has announced the combining of two products, Android Pay and Google Wallet, into a single service called Google Pay. Google Wallet had become a money sending app while Android Pay took on NFC payments. The apps had virtually no interoperability and it was all endlessly, needlessly complicated. So, they made two apps in one space, and they decided to combine them. Innovation was best. The Mobile World Congress, organized by the GSMA, is the world's largest gathering for the mobile industry. It'll be held in Barcelona, Spain from February 26th to March 1st this year. Mobile leaders gather, collaborate, and conduct business. And of course, the event also witnesses the launch of the latest devices. A few things to watch out for this year. Plenty of interesting conference sessions, to name a few. Transforming communities with IoT, payments as a platform, and fintech is a cashless society on the horizon. Also, of course, those product launches. Look for Google's smart displays, Samsung's S9, and new phone models from HTC, Nokia, and Lenovo. And finally, a celebration of 10 years of mobile money from Conviva. Expect to see some amazing stuff at the Mobile World Congress. Consumer Electronics Show, CES 2018, just wrapped up last month in Las Vegas. The world's leading tech manufacturers showed off their latest products, newest gadgets, and best innovations. Among the more ambitious developments, Ford Motor Company announced a partnership with Qualcomm Technologies 
to build vehicles equipped with vehicle to everything communication, V2X. This would allow vehicles to spot traffic lights and just about everything else on the road. You know, sometimes the sheer laziness of human beings, it just surprises me. Speaking about laziness, despite the drones race, evolving home robots, and promises of free beer, still, it appears the biggest trend at CES was sleeping. Yes, you heard me correctly. From nodding off at booths to head and laugh moments, attendees caught power naps wherever and whenever they could. There were even lounge chairs specially equipped with a siren to jolt napping back to consciousness. Alibaba and Microsoft have developed AIs that outperform humans at a comprehension test. Yes, at a recent Stanford University quiz that tested comprehension based on 500 Wikipedia articles, the humans lost. The scores? Humans got 82.3, while Alibaba got 82.4, and Microsoft 82.6. However, experts say that AI fails suddenly <laughs> when it comes to questions like, what makes Coldplay tick? Where so far, humans have the advantage. So in short, Humans are still better than AI when the questions are tricky or just plain stupid. But then again, it's we humans who are asking the stupid questions, so basically our stupidity is our winning advantage. Amazon's flagship home product, Echo, the always listening speaker system, collects vast amounts of customer data. But in its biannual transparency report, Amazon refuses to clarify how this data will be managed. For example, they don't even specify if they might hand over your data to governments. So now you know what to gift your boss on his next birthday. Your own little spy, Echo. You might just find out your chances of getting a promotion. Or not. White House Press Secretary Sarah Sanders used the official government Twitter handle to register a personal complaint. Sanders tweeted that her two-year-old was able to purchase a Batman toy by yelling into the Alexa, Batman! Believe it or not, reporters tested this and they found no such response. See? I think she learned a little bit too much from her boss, Donald Trump. I mean, stupid tweets from an official White House Twitter account? I didn't see that coming. And now for the section, Instant Telecoffee. Mobile connectivity has the power to transform lives and even improve education. To see this transformation firsthand, take a look at this Case for Change story of El Stretcho. Hashtag Case for Change. Have a look. In Peru, un millón de niños no tienen acceso a educación primaria. La tecnología móvil está empezando a cambiar esto. Pero muchos de esos niños viven en regiones remotas donde el reto es bastante grande. Es sencillo darse cuenta que la prosperidad de nuestro Perú y la de estos niños depende de proyectos como este. Y ha sido increíble poder ver de primera mano la diferencia que se está logrando. Y es fácil mostrar su apoyo con solo dándole like, compartiendo y comentando este video. El maletín está viajando por el mundo y está equipado con todo lo que alguien necesita para contar su historia acerca de lo que los operadores móviles están haciendo a nivel mundial para alcanzar los 17 objetivos de las Naciones Unidas para el Desarrollo Sostenible. Y no olviden suscribirse a nuestro canal para ayudarnos a que el maletín de Case for Change continúe su viaje. Amigos, ahora el maletín de Case for Change se va hasta China. El maletín, nosotras no. Para seguir demostrando algunas formas innovadoras en las que la tecnología puede ayudar a que todos accedamos a una educación de calidad. Ah, pero antes... Truly an inspiring example from Aula Moville of connecting an isolated community to give them access to new resources and improve their lives. Bitcoin! What to make of it? Let's hear the thoughts of some business leaders from around the world. Well, Bitcoin is exciting because it shows how cheap it can be. Uh, Bitcoin is, is better than currency in that uh, you don't have to ha be physically in the same place. And, of course, for large transactions, currency can, can get pretty inconvenient. The customers we're talking about aren't trying to be anonymous. You know, they're willing to be uh, known. So it, 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 the Bitcoin technology is key, and you could add to it or you could build a similar technology uh, where there's enough attribution that people feel comfortable. This has nothing to do with 
uh, terrorism or uh, any type of not a currency. I mean, it, it, you know, it, 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 it does not meet the test of a currency. It, 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 uh, I wouldn't be surprised if it's not around in 10 or 20 years. Why does it not meet the definition of a currency? Well, because people say, well, I'll sell you goods in bitcoins, but they change the price of those every time the price of the dollar changes in relation to the bitcoin. They're pricing off the dollar. They could say, well, I'll sell it to you in barrels of oil. But if they every time the price of oil changes, they change the number of barrels you have to have. That's not, your, your oil is not the currency. Well, I think it is working. Um, and uh, there will be other currencies like it that may, may be even better. Um, but in the meantime, um, there's a big industry around Bitcoin. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, people have made fortunes out of Bitcoin. Some people have lost money out of Bitcoin. Um, it's volatile. Hmm? It's volatile. Yeah, but it is quite volatile, but, um, but you know, when in volati volatility, people can make money. <laughs> While tech leaders in the past have expressed enthusiasm, today, generally speaking, chief strategists around the world are increasingly of the view one cannot legitimately call Bitcoin a currency. To do so would be, well, simply inaccurate. In fact, some economists even believe that millennials like to think they're disrupting the system, but in fact, it is they who are going to be disrupted, in this case, by some other millennials. I don't know, cryptocurrency or sham? Only time will tell. That's all for this episode. See you all next time. Please like and share our video and tweet to us with hashtag Tech Trivia Show. Thank you for watching.